Hello and welcome to this mini photography project tutorial. Today we're going to show you how to take a stunning panoramic image of the Clifton Suspension Bridge in Bristol. We're going to be shooting a series of images and stitching them together in Photoshop Elements. In my kit bag I have the Canon EOS 7D and we'll be shooting using the Canon EF 24 to 105 f4 lens. You also need to use a tripod to get accurate results. You may have heard of some photographers using a special panoramic head to take their images, however, these are an added cost and not really necessary if you follow what we're about to show you. When shooting a panorama, you want to carefully select your location. I'm setting up the composition from here on the middle point of the green. I've got some buildings on the left hand side which are going to balance the composition with the bridge on the right. The tree in the middle adds a focal point of interest. We're going to set the camera to shoot in the manual mode so that the exposure stays consistent throughout the shoot. I'm going to set the aperture to f11 so the image will be sharp from front to back. I'm also going to keep the ISO low at 100 so the quality will remain at its highest. The shutter speed of the highlights in this light is reading at 1 500th of a second. If there's a massive difference in exposure values, I'll take a separate set of images a stop above and below the first exposure value. It makes it easier to shoot a panorama if you're shooting in a consistent light. I'm going to keep the focal distance the same throughout at 24mm. If you shoot at an angle that's too wide, landmarks in the scene will look very small. I'm going to focus about a third of the way into the scene and then lock the focus by switching the lens to manual setting. This makes sure all my shots look the same. Although you may think it's better to shoot in a landscape orientation, it's not. You want to turn your camera into a portrait orientation. This means you can include more in the top and bottom of the frame. Each frame should overlap by around 50% as you rotate the camera. As you can see, I'm only moving the camera slightly on each shot, checking that I'm overlapping as I go. It helps if you put your camera into the live view mode. Remember to carefully consider your starting and finishing points, and it's best to leave extra space at the start of the image as you can crop these out of the editing stage. When you finish, you should have something that looks like this. We'd love to see your results. You can upload your images and ask us your questions at www.facebook.com forward slash photoplusmag or you can tweet us at photoplusmag.